Well, welcome back to a very special Capital Connection. We are live coast to coast. I'm in Amman, Jordan, and we'll be speaking in just a few moments with the Minister of Investment. Now, yesterday we talked to you a lot about the major strain that 1.3 million refugees are putting on Jordan's economy. Let's have a chat with him about where the bright spots are for this economy. Now, Minister, we talk about geopolitical headwinds. We talk about the massive strain on the economy. What are you doing to cope? Uh, first of all, good morning uh, from Amman. Uh, we're doing a lot. Uh, Jordan has the rights to win in certain uh, areas. And, and, and one most important thing that Jordan can be the back of its operational hub and the powerhouse uh, for multinationals in, in the region. And we're seeing lots of success uh, there because we have the rights to win. Jordan has the youth, the infrastructure, and the, and the capabilities to attract multinationals. And we've and seen much. We're talking much. about Amazon. We're talking about Microsoft we're ta Expedia. We're, we're talking about Amazon, Expedia, uh, Cisco, Microsoft, and, and, and many other companies from uh, like Samsung as well, and, and lots of them using the Arabic capability to do lots of Arabization. And as you know, probably 75% of the Arabization content is done out of Jordan. So on, on that domain, we're, we're active and, and, and we're, we're seeing lots of people being interested in, in, in Jordan. Uh, secondly, uh, tourism is, is being a big thing in, in Jordan uh, in spite of all the trouble uh, around us. It's really coming back online. Uh, the numbers are growing uh, year after year. And, and, and today I heard the numbers were 15% were up versus uh, last year. And last year versus the year before is another 14% up. Even revenue is, is, is up as well. So that is a, a great in, a indicator uh, for us. Moreover, we're, we're having these development zones in each part of the country and each development zone tackles uh, an area, technological or logistical. Uh, we have area in, in Mufraq, which is uh, 5,000 uh, uh, meters, 5,000 uh, dunams that can actually be the springboard for future development uh, and rebuilding of Syria and, and Iraq. And it's segregated whereby manufacturers can come up and set up shop or logistical that's companies. Ready to go. That's ready to go, full infrastructure. And, and it has an incentive uh, as well uh, to it. It has uh, uh, an incentive on uh, income tax. It has an incentive on goods and services provided. That has an incentive on, on sales tax, and it's all zeros. So but you're doing a lot, it, it, but with, will with that the, be enough? Because at the end of the day, you are at the mercy of the Fed rate hikes. You are at the mercy of these geopolitical headwinds and the fact that you've lost your traditional markets in Iraq and Syria for so many years now. Are you going to have to uh, go to the IMF? Are you going to have to really uh, take on board suggestions in terms of what has to change in terms of the regulations? You, you know, the, the, the truth is we've lost our natural market in Syria and, and Iraq. It has been really tough for our uh, exporters in spite of that in 2017 FDI grew in Jordan by 7.5% whereby it dropped 11.5 in, in, in the region. We're having a hard time in, during Q1, and probably it's improving during Q2 in 2015, but I project we will grow FDI by, by 5%. Today, we, we have two, two challenges on our hand. We have the fiscal challenge, which we're trying to, to reform, and there is a serious actions being taken in order for us to strengthen our, our economy. The second challenge that we have, we continue to strive for a better growth. We need to grow by 5% year over year in order for us to actually start seeing uh, the, the, the economical cycle building up to the level we, we want it to do. And on, on the growth that we have, the uh, growth map, 2018-22, uh, uh, and there are certain projects that we need to start filling in. And, and this is an opportunity for buy to invite investors to look into our PPP projects. And, and one of the most successful PPP in Jordan is the airport that you came in. And, and last year, uh, French uh, investors came in, uh, Airport de Paris and, and Meridian, and they, they actually have almost 54% uh, uh, stake in managing uh, the, the airport. And that is a testimonial to Jordan and its capability to actually provide PPPs and provide uh, uh, proper investment. So you're doing a lot of work in terms of making this very, very business friendly for internationals, investors, making sure that they have the tools that they need. But at the same time, yesterday we were out yet again in the Zatre camp. We were talking to uh, so many of those folks there. They're very grateful, obviously, to be in Jordan right now, but they are continuing to be a strain on your resources. I thought it was really interesting to catch up with so many of these Syrians living inside the camp. They've created businesses. They're right. bringing in revenues on their own. 
How are you planning to work with them in the coming years? Because they're not just going to go back to Syria tomorrow. I mean, there is an opportunity to tap in to that kind of road. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing a lot. Uh, but before I answer that question, I need to retreat that. Uh, on the ease of doing business, we have improved 15 places last year. However, on the refugees, we have the European uh, proposition whereby the new rules of origin that actually requires uh, uh, hiring Syrians and, 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 and we are exerting every bit of effort to bring in Syrians into the mainstream of the economy because we profoundly believe creating jobs that means fighting terrorism and this is one thing that we want to do. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.